I mean, if you have your Bibles, let's, let's move on and hit it, uh, get into John, St. John, the fourth chapter. I want to say thank you all for coming out. I hope you come expecting something. I come expecting something and needing something. How many need something? Thank you, Brother John. Brother John needs something. Everybody else is fat and sassy and doing all right. Amen. I know we all need something from the Lord, don't we? Amen. Every day, all day. So he is just and righteous to give us what we need. Amen. And I'm sure, I don't know about you, but I'm sure thankful for that. Aren't you glad he looks past us sometimes? Looks past me and says, you know, I'm going to help him because that boy needs some help. How many needs help? Amen. St. John, the fourth chapter. Let's start in the 19th verse. And the Bible says, The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Now can you just imagine for a second? She just said, Sir, to the one and only. Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. He says, Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation, he said, is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is True worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto Him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When He has come, He will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am He. Well, that's something, is it? 23rd verse, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. I want to talk to you this morning with this title in mind, The Evolution of Worship. Can we just bow our heads all together and let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, God, we love you. We appreciate you. We honor you. We respect you. We call you King of kings and Lord of lords because that is who you are. You're wonderful, you're powerful, you're mighty, and you're just. Lord, anoint us this, this very day, God. Anything that may try to hinder the flow of the Spirit and the moving of your Word, we ask you that you just eradicate that. Lock that down right now in the precious name of Jesus, Lord. Hide me behind the cross. Let it be as you speaking, for these people deserve to hear directly from the mouth of God. Lord, not from my thinking or my understanding or my theology, but from you, Lord. We need to hear from you. We ask you that you anoint us and help us. We'll be very careful to give you all the glory and the praise. The church said amen. Would you give the Lord a boisterous hand clap of praise? My, my, my. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I had to get a little swig of this here. Toilet water. Amen. God is good. Amen. I want to. I want us to to look at a few things today and see what we, I don't know about you, but I am thoroughly convinced that the Lord still speaks to his church. And uh, if you missed Tuesday night, Brother Greg, he had a word, and I'm telling you, he skint people up one side and down the other. And, And it was thus saith the Lord. Sometimes it works like that, don't it? How many likes is all right with getting chastised by the Lord? If you don't, you're in bad shape. Amen. So it's all right if the Lord's doing it. And um, so I appreciate the word of the Lord Tuesday night. I took it. I gleaned from it. And I was corrected by it. How many of you was corrected by the word of the Lord at one time or another in your life? But today, ladies and gentlemen, today is the day of salvation. I'm so grateful for the day, and I'm so grateful for all the Lord's goodness and mercy, and that He's absolutely bestowed upon my life. But let's move into this text and see what the Lord may say to us. You know, 
it, it's not much good if we can't apply it today. So we've got to be able to apply it today. Amen. Jesus is, is, is just completely went off script, if, if I can say that. And, and he has found himself visiting a lady that, uh, that, that according to custom, if you will, that he wasn't supposed to be visiting with her. <clears throat> Not only that, um, ladies and gentlemen, he, he was supposed to be in a completely different city than where he's at. His disciples, they done, they done went on to where they was headed. You know, they wanted to get on down there to the quality inn and get rested up. You know, they're in a hurry. They get down there and they done made reservations at Longhorn. Ain't none of y'all made those reservations, have you? Lord, I would have messed that all up. How many knows? I hope he does. So, but it's always been unique to me that they didn't go with him. And he says, I have, I have need to go by Samaria. Y'all just keep trucking. I don't want to mess up y'all's prior engagements and these were grown men. They decided to move on other location, but but the Lord, he had need to go by this certain area. And when he gets there, he's talking to a lady. And the first thing he does is opens up a line of communication. He asks her, he says, Well, you're at a well and you got a pail, you got a bucket. Would you give me something to drink? And she looks at him like women still look at men today. You mean do you come to a well without a bucket? Ain't that the truth? And uh, just like a man, she's muttering, you know, just like a man. And so, what are you doing here without a pail, you know? And, well, obviously he was there for other reasons. Aren't you glad he comes with other reasons? And so, uh, obviously she does what women are supposed to do. Somebody say amen. Amen. She got us a cup of water. I'm just kidding, ladies. Just relax. I know this is 2021. But she gets him some water, and, and communication begins to start. And, and Jesus is, is reading her heart like an open book. Before he ever spoke a word, he already knew what was in the depths of her soul. It was revealed to him. It's no different than you and I reading the pages today. It just flashed before his eyes and his understanding. And, and he began to talk to her on a level that she really, she really needed to hear from. We're not going to go into all the details, but this lady had, she had, had a challenging life, to say the least. And at that very moment, she was in a relationship that was not condoned by the laws of that day nor today for that matter. And, and Jesus began to talk to her in, the, in a way that made her start wondering who this man is. Now, I, believe it's, I believe it's important that you and I as Christians that we must have a conversation about us that would cause the listener to inquire of who we've been around. Would you agree with that? Uh, for the listener to inquire, you know, uh, who are you again? Where did you say you were from? Anybody ever had that to happen? What church did you say you went to? Well, I didn't say I went to no church. But automatically they know you go to a church. they just wondering which one. There's something about your conversation that the way you say things and your demeanor, and this begins to... People are inspecting you. And so she's, she says, well, I don't have a husband. And he says, well, you're telling the truth. And the one you got now, is it yours? And the woman says, you know, I'm going to just perceive. I'm stepping out there and saying, you're a prophet. Because he's done, she knows now, he knows her better than she knows herself. And she says, notice this, our fathers worshiped in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Now you notice what she said. 
She said, our fathers worshipped in this mountain. He, she said, and ye say. Jesus had never said that. Watch now. That in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh. He says, you're neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. He says, you don't, you don't understand who or what you're worshiping for salvation is of the Jews. Now, I want you to notice something, ladies and gentlemen. This lady made claim that her father was Jacob. Is that the word of the Lord? Our father, Jacob, dug this well. Now, I don't know how much of the Bible that you know, and let me give you a really quick history lesson. Israel didn't start until Jacob. So when she said, Jacob's my father, then she was saying, I'm of Israel descent. Are you with me so far? For instance, ladies and gentlemen, my dad's Frank McKinney. I introduce you, or my great-grandson introduces you one day, and he says, well, my granddaddy was McKinney, but I'm not a McKinney. I don't know how that's possible. This lady was very, but notice Jesus said, now, I'll, I'll, let's understand something. And just a little bit of teaching, just to clear a little bit of mud, if you don't mind. And notice Jesus said, well, you don't know who you worship or what you worship. Salvation is of the Jews. Now, Jesus said out of his own mouth that he came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Is that the word of the Lord? So Jesus is saying that the Jew that he's speaking of, and obviously the lady that's standing in front of him, being that he only went to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, that she was, in fact, who she thought she was. Are you with me today? But is it possible to be the right person, the right everything, but still not know who you worship? Are you with me today, saints? Is it, is it possible today that we could be sitting here and, 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 and listening to music and have our eyes closed and, our, and even some of our hearts closed, knowing that we're the people of God, knowing that we're God, knowing that our father is Jacob, knowing that our father is Abraham, but still have no communication with the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, let's think about it today. And he says, woman, now I'm telling you, there's a, there's a place of worship. Notice that he says, not in this mountain, nor either in Jerusalem. We could go all the way back to the very beginning of time. And there's a man uh, born of a, a woman and a man called Enos. And the Bible says, and then again, men begin to call on the name of the Lord. Is that right? After Enos come a real... Uh, 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 an uh, interesting fellow named Enoch and the Bible says that Enoch he walked with God and walked with God and walked with God he just kept walking with God to the point that he walked so close with the God that the Bible says in Hebrews that the Lord took him and he did not see death that's the that saith the word of the Lord and, and but, but what you find unique in every person's life from the very beginning of time, ladies and gentlemen, that you'll find Cain and Abel, they're, they're, they're doing something unique. They've been excommunicated from the dark, uh, from the garden because of mom and daddy's uh, lasciviousness, if you will. And, but the first thing you find old Abel doing is building an altar and worshiping God. Very first thing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it was in its infancy because I want you to notice something. You don't never mention or never hear of an altar in the garden. You don't ever hear of an altar in the garden until the Lord made one and made a sacrifice in order to cover Adam and Eve after their sin. Are you with me so far? And what do you mean, Brother McKinney? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, every time uh, that, that people fall, they have to start from where they fell and work themselves up. Even though Abel was a child of Adam, he could have walked right back into a relationship of worship and praise and intimacy with God, but he went back to his roots and he built an altar and he made a sacrifice because it's an evolution to get face to face with God. Come on, somebody. Notice the Lord took her back to the mountain. He took her back to where Jacob was still a pagan. Are you with me? Jacob was still a pagan. 
But guess what? He, 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 he was trying to sleep one night and he perceived that he found a place where God resided. The Bible said after he found this place where God resided that he went and he excommunicated all the pagan gods from his tent. He was a pagan. Are you with me? He called this place Bethel because I know I've been introduced to God. And he built an altar. And he worshiped. And he praised. And he gave his heart to God. And he named his children according to the word of God. Y'all going to make me preach this morning. How many love? Thank you. You see how good old John's dress? I was trying to compete with him, and I done got overheated. No, it's, it's, it's. Noah was a righteous man, the Bible says. God spoke to Noah, led Noah, and directed Noah. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, obviously things is completely different today than it was then. But, it, but as soon as that, as that ship, as soon as that ark landed, the very first thing Noah did was stepped off. He didn't make a house. He didn't look for a business. He didn't wonder where, his, where the next meal was coming from. He, he didn't do nothing else. He didn't wonder else if he could find it. The Bible says he built an altar. He built an altar and he offered a sacrifice to God. Why? In every instance through the Old Testament, every time an altar was built, it was because God had just blessed his people with something. I want you to know something. When paganism was flooding through, throughout the, the, the Abraham days, the Bible says that they pitched their tent towards Sodom and Gomorrah and they took on strange gods and they did this and they did that. But if you follow the lineage of Abraham, you know he was the one that God chose to speak to. He was the one God chose to, through his lineage would come ancestral blessings that you and I are experiencing this morning. Everywhere he pitched a tent, he built an altar and he dug a well. Some of us need to start building altars and digging wells and worshiping God for the increase, worshiping God for the joy and the peace and the gentleness and the grace and the covenant through Jesus Christ. Think about it. Pitched his tent and he built an altar. I want you to notice something. The Bible says it. The Lord, think about it. Abraham has been used to making sacrificial offerings of animals. What this was, this was a symbolic statement showing where man's heart was in relation to God. To sacrifice something, even something as simple and oftentimes in our minds insignificant as an animal. I know that sounds barbaric, but we got to try to rewind 3,000 years and consider where people's minds were at. And even though that's, that's odd to consider even sacrificing a lamb, an innocent, ain't done nothing, it would be different than shooting a rabid dog, coon, you, you follow me, a rabid animal. You could see that, you can perceive that. But no, 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 the Lord didn't want something rabid, he didn't want nothing infected. The Lord wanted something spotless. And so they took this innocent Innocent lamb as sacrifice. Now, obviously not all sacrifices were burnt offerings. Not all sacrifice was, was blood offerings. If you know anything about the Levitical priesthood, you'll find that there was bread offerings, and there was wine offerings, there was grape offerings, there was vegetation offerings, all kind of offerings. But, but in this case, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was symbolism to gauge, if you will, to, to monitor where man's heart was in relation to God. And so Abraham was accustomed to sacrificing an animal. But more than an animal has been required. And now, ladies, he was required to sacrifice Isaac. Are you with me so far? This is buildings that just hold time. And so he, he, the Bible doesn't even suggest that he stumbles at this idea. But rather, he, he gets the, the wood, and he gets the necessary things that's needed, and he gets the boy, the lad, and he says, we'll be back in a couple of days. Is that right? And the Bible says that he trudges up the hill to where there's an altar. Altar's already built. Everything's already prepared. Why? Because he's a worshiping man. 
How many worshipers do we got in here? He's a worshiping man, and, and he believes in worship, and he, he, he's, he's always thoughtful of God, and his mind is meditating on the Lord. And, and he don't know, I guarantee you, without every fiber of my being, ladies and gentlemen, although he knows this, this is some kind of test, this is some kind of trial, but he was, he was more in love with the covenant of God than, than he was with even his only begotten son, if you will. And the Bible says that he took that journey up that hill and about three quarters of the way, Isaac says, well, Daddy, I know I said we got the wood, we got the fire. They carried the fire with them from place to place to place. He said, but where's the sacrifice? The Lord will provide, son. Just relax. It's going to be good. Lazy, the Lord did, in fact, provide. Isaac finds himself on the altar of sacrifice. How many's ever found yourself on the altar of sacrifice? Isaac finds himself on the altar of sacrifice. Now, I don't know if Isaac's faith was unwavering as his dad's. I'm not sure of that. I'm not for sure what might have been going through his. I don't know if he had daddy issues after this. I don't know all of the circumstances involved with this. But what I do know is this worship, this constant worship, created a relationship with Adam, or rather Abraham, that he was willing to take the blood from his own child in order to please God. The reason why some of us is not willing to sacrifice is because we do not have an altar of worship. We do not have a steady altar of worship. If we had a steady altar of worship, it wouldn't matter what God required of us. Come on and give him some praise. You know how it is when you get out of tune with the Lord. How many's ever been there? You know how it is when you quit talking with the Lord. You know how it is when you quit worshiping the Lord. Some of you ain't worshipped him in so long. If, if it did really break out on you, y'all would want to be checked into an insane asylum. Hey, you know how it is. It's hard to get back. It's like you're having to start all over from the very, very bottom. Have to start from the, but you see, if you keep a, a residual thing going, if you, if you keep a centrifugal force going, if you stay in constant contact with your maker and your creator, then what happens is not only do your children worship, not only do their children worship, and not only do your great great children worship, you'll find them in the lineage of God, and you'll find them bowing at a Savior. You'll find them anointed with prophecy, and with evangelism, and with missionary, and all manner of great gifts of God, but you got to stay bent over at the altar. Think about it. It's an evolution of worship. I can't tell you how many times I've heard, heard this next one. In Hebrews, Hebrews, he talks about it a little bit. Hebrews 13 and 10, we have, hold this thought, we have an altar whereof they have no right to eat, which serve the tabernacle. He says, for the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the count. Remember the phrase, without the count. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate, without the count. Tenth verse again, we have an altar. <laughs> Let us go therefore unto him without the count. Notice this. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the count, bearing his reproach. For here have we no, commu no continuing city, but we seek one to come. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. How many heard that? I can't tell you how many times I've heard, well, you know, I just didn't feel it this morning. How many's ever heard that? How many's ever said that? I just didn't feel it this morning. They didn't sing my song or whatever the case was. The preacher was way off this morning. I didn't feel nothing. Your feeler may be broke. Have you bowed to your altar lady? But I, I don't, I don't, it just ain't the same. Nothing's the same. Wake up. It ain't never going to be the same. Do you believe once you got born again, you're supposed to feel the same old, same old, same for the rest of your life? This is an evolution. We started in the Old Testament where we built an altar and we made a sacrifice. 
And then we just turned to Hebrews and Paul said, you have an altar. Do you see the evolution in this? Paul wasn't talking about you have an altar somewhere beside your bed. He wasn't speaking about an altar that you may build out in the woods and that's all good, fine and dandy. But he says, you're the altar of sacrifice. You got to live your body like a sacrifice. You got to live your body like a walking, talking instrument of worship. He says, everything that comes out of your mouth and out of your mind and out of your lips should be lifting up God. Even when I don't feel God, a sacrifice of praise. Come on, somebody. Notice what he says. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice. It ain't always easy. The sacrifice of praise. You mean to tell me it's a sacrifice to praise? Will you tell me? 98% of y'all ain't praised in so long. Tell me if it's a sacrifice or not. It must be. It must be like the seven-year itch. How many is with me today? Some of you older folks know what that is. I wouldn't if I didn't have a granddaddy in my life. <laughs> so you, you tell me, is it, it must be a sacrifice. I mean, we react as if it's a sacrifice. Paul suggested it was a sacrifice. Let's give you a little, uh, something to think about. Paul's sitting in prison. But he don't quit writing the letters. He still writes things like, we should pray continuously. While sitting in prison, falsely accused, I want to add. Spotless when it comes to whatever calamity that has stricken him in the legal system. He's still writing this, still telling Timothy, tell him don't be ashamed of the prisoner in bonds because they, they didn't put me here. Nobody, God's got me here. This is just a seasonal thing. Do you not think that that's, there's a, how many of you would be feeling that way? None of us would be feeling that way. No, it's a sacrifice. I wonder how many times that a guard come up and Paul was like, can I talk to you? And Paul's like, man, I don't feel like this today, you know? But yet there's something in him that says, you need to testify to this guard. He hates my guts. Come on, somebody. He hates my guts. She hates my guts. Oh, poor you. She don't like me. He don't like me. They lied on me. They talked about me. Have they put you in jail yet? Shut up. Somebody tell your name. Be quiet. How many is with me today? Think about it. Are you thinking about it? He said it's a sacrifice. You know what? You know the reason why some of us it's not a sacrifice? Because some of us ain't really done it. It's time for you and I to start doing what the Bible says do. And guess what? We'll get the results of the people in the Bible. Amen. Paul said, he says, for this is a, a sacrifice. Jesus is speaking to this lady. And he says, look, neither in the mountain nor at Jerusalem people worship the Anywhere you worship the Father. He says, you don't know what you're worshiping. I, I'm coming to enlighten you, young lady. If you was not part of the plan, I wouldn't have come this way. But you're part of the plan. You, you're not only part of the plan. He says, you're, you're a major key in all of this. You're, uh, th this is a, a moment of God. This is a God time, a God moment. He says, the hour's coming and now is. Everybody say, now is. That there's going to be some true worshipers that's going to rise up. They ain't going to be people worshiping the closet. They ain't going to worship with their religion. They ain't going to worship with their denomination. But no, they're going to worship me for who I am. Because they finally found where salvation lies. It isn't in a preacher. It isn't in a denomination. It isn't in a country. It isn't in a city. It isn't through a certain message. It's through the person called Jesus Christ. And when they get that, they will nothing hinder them from worshiping me. When they realize it's about Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord of all. Amen. He says it's a sacrifice. You ever been in any places that felt like a sacrifice? He says, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Continually. Somebody say continually. That is, now he's going ahead and defining it for us slow McKinney's. The fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. 
You know, it's, that's one thing. My grandfather was good at it, Brother Red. He would, something bad happened. He would say, thank you, Jesus. I was like, no. Now ain't the time to thank the Lord. Now's the time to shoot somebody. How many knows what I'm talking about? Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm sure there was plenty of times he didn't, but many, many occasions. Help us, God. Jesus. How mercy, Lord. Things like this. Oh, God, help us, you know. And, and Paul's saying, look, it's, it's a sacrifice. But let me ask you something. Would you rather have this kind of sacrifice, as giving praise to the Lord no matter what, just thanking Him no matter what? Or let's go back to biblical times. Let's start sacrificing animals. And maybe be called upon to sacrifice a child. No, no, it's evolved. Aren't you glad it's evolved? So, and where we don't need an altar. I'm not speaking of this. This is, a, this is a symbolic thing. When we come and we bow down at this altar here, these altars, it's a reverence. We're telling God, Lord, we bow down to you. For in, a, in days of antiquity when people worship, that's how they did. They'd bow until their forehead touched the ground. It was a sign of submission and it was a sign of honor. And, and that you was bound to something way more worthy than you were to even exist. It's a privilege for me to exist in your presence, oh God. So when I bow down, I don't care if you see me bow, but as long as the maker sees that, that I'm bowing, I'm surrendering. Police officer walked in here and told you to get on the floor. You'd jump on the floor. Right? Because we obey authority. The Lord doesn't want you to do it in, in, in obedience. This has nothing to do with the obedience in this fashion. If the Lord has to create a law in order for you to worship Him, then He's not your God. Are you with me? What do you mean, Brother McKinney? Look, He shouldn't have to make anybody worship Him. He shouldn't have to create laws for us to worship him. No, no, we, as soon as we understand what he means to us and, and, and what I mean to him, then automatically the body wants to fall prostrate to the floor and never look up again because my worth to him is far beyond rubies and his worth to me should be that and more. He's my Savior. He's my God. Think about it. You know, he's... This is, you're not being forced to. You're being tested to. This is another way of engaging our, our, where exactly we are in our heart and commune with Him. And Paul says, look, it's a sacrifice of praise to God continually. The fruit of our lips giving thanks to His name. If you go to Washington, D.C., you'll find the Washington Monument. This thing's like 555 feet tall. And at the very, 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 very top is this plaque. I think it's a bronze plaque on the very top of this Washington Monument. You know, the thing looks like a missile almost. And it's got two words in Latin. Two words. And when this... The construction of this was being constructed back in 1848, if I remember right. Of course, it didn't get finished until some time later. But, but in, the, in, in, the, in the corners of the foundation of this monument that they was building, they took Bibles and put it inside the foundation. And then Brother Brian in Latin, they put this plaque on the very, very top of this thing in Latin, and it says, praise to God. And if, you, and if you look at it from the Washington Monument, the way they laid everything out, it's in a perfect cross. The Jefferson Memorial on one side, Abraham Lincoln, et cetera, et cetera. If you, if you could look at it from an aerial view, what you see is a cross. And the architect that designed this and he had that plaque placed on the very, very top because they said in his mind, this was the central government. 
District of Columbia, where the White House is, and the Capitol. He says, this is the central government, not just for America, but he says, this is for the world. And he says, and I want the highest pinnacle in the center of the government of the United States that is pointing to our Creator to say one thing. Praise to God. Are you with me? And when the Lord looks down, can I talk about it like this? He said, in his mind, he, when the Lord looks down, all, uh, w- before he sees our evil and our ugliness and our nastiness and our discontent and, and our laziness and our slothfulness, before he sees all of that, I want him to see this big old bronze plaque that says, praise the Lord. Are you with me today, saints? Now, I don't know why, but it's, that it's in our DNA, it's in our gene pool to want to worship something. All across America, people's gearing up to worship football and baseball and, and whatever sport it is you follow, the Olympics. And I, when I say worship, don't, don't, don't think I'm being crazy. Those people worship that. It's all about that. That's all they think about. That's all they talk about. I got a good friend that we grew up with or a decent friend that we grew up with. I'm not real, real, real close. But he made a statement. He says, man, I don't even know how to get up in the mornings without football. I know how you get up in the morning. You get up with the Lord. You go to bed with the Lord. How many is with me? You rise back up with the Lord. And guess what? If they happen to play a game of football, then they played a game of football. But you're still going on with the Lord. Are you with me? But, but, but we, it's in us to worship something. It's in us to, to root for something. It's in us to, 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 to scream for something and clap for something. And it, it's, it's just in us to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, well, have you ever wondered where that come from? There's never been an instance in, in humanity, never not one day, have there ever been an instance in humanity when humanity did not cry out to their creator. The only way in the world a person could ever uh, uh, absolutely worship uh, football or baseball or stars is because there actually is the prevalence of God in all of that. The very fact that God created that person. The, are you with me? The very fact that God gave them the mathematical abilities. It's just natural to people to want to worship that. But I'm here to tell you, we got to get our eyes off of the object. we got to get our eyes off of the flesh. And we got to get our eyes on the Creator. And we got to start bowing our hearts to the God of all gods, the creators of all creator, and not worship the world, but worship Jesus. Let's do that. Could we do that? Let's just worship him for a minute. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. You're worthy to be praised. Jesus says, look, tell him the lady. He says, you know, I know, I know, he says, I know we're stuck on the mountains right now. Because there's a lot of altars built in these mountains. You got Jacob's well and. Abraham's altars, and you got the ones Isaac redug. And he says, I, I, I know we're stuck there. Anybody hearing me? I know we're stuck in the mountains. And I know some of us are stuck in Jerusalem. God's only going to move over here, God's only going to move this way. I know, I know we got our. We're sort of stuck here and there. He says, but I, I'm here to tell you, none of that, none of that's what I'm looking for. The hour's coming, lady. He says, the hour's coming. Then he says, it's here. Everybody say, it's here. And, and, and there's going to be some true worshipers. How I many wants to be a true worshiper? There's going to be some true worshipers. And they're going to worship the Father in spirit. Ain't that something? How many wants to get spiritual with him? And in truth. So they, they're not just going to want the spirit, not the truth. Or, hear me, the truth and not the spirit. We got plenty of that going around. Just as we do the other. Good, good friend of mine. God rest him. He told me, he says, hey, I'm just going to start coming for the preaching. 
I says, why is that? He was an elder gentleman. I loved him. Spoke at his funeral. I says, why is that? Man, I, I, I just want the word. I said, so you're a taker and not a giver. He said, what? Are you hearing me? Well, always taken from the preacher. But it's, when you come in here and they're singing a song, this ain't got nothing to do with me. It ain't even got nothing to do with the person sitting beside you. It's got everything to do with the, your creator. It's time to give back. How many is with me today? Oh, I, I, don't, I don't believe it. I'm too, I'm too this for that. I'm too that for that. No, you're too backslid for that. Come on, somebody. Now, now you, the reason why we can amen the word but cannot shout to the, to the spirit, I don't, I don't even care how you shout. I just mean come in here ready to worship God. And I mean, I mean don't, don't get mum about it. Talk to him. Just be over there in your own voice saying, Jesus, I love you. Guess what? Listen, listen. This is how I do it. Jesus, I messed up this week. Lord, I, will you forgive me? Will you help me? I stumbled. Will you help me? Lord, I need to be transformed. Will you do that? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Are, are you how many is with me today? You see, I, this is my moment now. This is my time. And, and I'm not just going to worship him when the truth comes over. See, you can be a hypocrite when the truth is preaching. But you know everybody's watching you when you got your hands up waving to God. You can be a hypocrite when I preach. But you can't be a hypocrite during worship. Somebody needs to get repented and get online with God and start worshiping. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Think about it. Are you with me today? If I raise my hands, Nino will see it. If I raise my hands, John, John knows what we talked about on the job. Bill knows what we did. On and on and on. Ladies and gentlemen, get past that. He's your God. And if you can't trust him to forgive you, if you can't trust him to look over there, if you can't trust him to cleanse you, then why in the world are you here anyways? This, this is your time. It's time to give back to him. Lord, you let me get through that traffic. Lord, you let me get through a work week. I'm going to praise you in spirit. And when the word comes up, I'm going to praise you in truth. Amen. He said the hour's here. So again, we're not waiting for anything to happen. The hour's here. We're going to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. He says, for the Father. Everybody say, the Father. Seeketh those kind of people. Can I say that? That's what the Lord is after. He's after the people that don't mind looking crazy. And Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to put a definition on worship. I'm just trying to encourage you to worship. God is a spirit. How many is thankful of that? Can somebody say that again? God is a spirit. You know what? God didn't die on no cross. A spirit can't die. Aren't you glad of that? A man named Jesus died on that cross. And the same man cried and said, Lord, if there's any other way, let it pass. But God ain't never begged for mercy. How many is with me? God ain't never begged to pass nothing on. God was all right with dying outside the camp. He didn't want to be registered with those people inside the camp. He wanted you and I to join him outside the camp and become a living sacrifice with him because he's a spirit. And he knows if he can get inside of this vessel and he can get inside of this vehicle called Jonathan McKinney that he can turn the world upside down again just like he did 2,000 years ago. If he can get inside of this church, get inside of the people of this church, he can turn this county upside down. He says, but will you worship me? Will you praise me? Will you sacrifice yourself for me? I am a spirit. Worship me in spirit and in truth. Come on, give him some praise. God didn't die. Aren't you glad of that? He's a spirit. Jesus speaking, think of this. There was no humanism in Jesus. He says, Jesus, God is a spirit. He says, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And the woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh. She said, these are the words Messiah be saying. I, I hear that. You, do you hear that? I hear that. 
I can hear something. The deep's calling to me. And I, there's a there, there's Messiah cometh, and which is called Christ. And when he has come, he will tell us all, all things. She's already, she's already a believer, don't even know it. He said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And the Bible says she dropped her water and pail. You know, the Lord will get on you and you'll forget why you're even there. She dropped her water and pail and she ran into that city shouting to the top of her lungs, Come meet a man who told me all things that I ever did. He told her more than we got listed right here, you know. He told her all kind of stuff. He just went down the list and kept talking. And she just sat down on the edge of the well and just shuddered. Who are you? I'm he. How many is going to worship him? I'm he. Oh, I love him. You love him? Offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. In so doing, you'll answer. Notice this. Because in so doing this, if we praise Him continually, you will answer the end of your beginning. You remember? Every creature is happiest when it is doing what it's made to do. The reason why some of us is not happy, how many has ever testified and said, I come in, and I was all laden down with troubles and trials and disappointments, and then I was so, I was depressed and anxiety, et cetera, and you list these things that makes everybody else in the congregation feel like they need to jump off a bridge. And then you said, I started just talking to the Lord, and all those things just lifted. rest of us is wanting to jump off the roof, but you're good. How many is with me? He says, you know, you'll, 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 you'll find the quickest way to your end if you'll serve him or rather praise him continually. For every creature is happiest. Every person under the sound of my voice has more peace and joy and gentleness and goodness in them when, when we're doing what we're made to do, what we were made to do, what we were created to do. Aren't you glad of that? Christians were made to glorify God. We are never in our element until we are praising Him. Come on somebody. Do not listen to this. Do not degrade your less, yourself with a lesser divinity. Don't degrade yourself. How I many is with me? Young person, don't degrade yourself. You, you won't get the feeling out of nothing else. You won't get the joy, the completion, the harmony. You won't get it out of anything else. Oh, I know what they're promoting, what Satan's promoting all over social media and television, et cetera, et cetera. You go ahead and do that. You go ahead and do what you want to. You're a big person. You're grown. But let me tell you something. I read an article about this lady says, the things I wish I could do over when I was 17. You know what she did? She, 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 she explained all of our lives. I wish I had it at 17 to do again. I'm here to tell you, you will not get any fulfillment outside of worshiping Jesus Christ. And what is a lie of, of Satan is saying that if I worship God and I'll be a good person, the Lord ain't going to, I won't run into my husband or I won't let run into my, that's a lie of the devil. The Lord has sent you a worshiping husband. He'll send you a worshiping wife. They'll send you a worshiping business partner. God knows how to take care of those that do not degrade themselves and they continually worship God. Amen. How many is with me? He simply said to her, I am he. How many is glad that Jesus is real, alive, and on the throne? Could we stand to our feet and could we do something? Could we just all... Would you mind just lifting your hands? And again, this is just an act of surrender to the Lord. And let's just open our mouths. And let's just thank Him. Can we just thank Him? I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. You're wonderful, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Lord, I love you. And I ain't doing it just because the preacher asked me to. I really am thankful. Aren't you really thankful today? I really am thankful. You're good. You're honest. You're just. You're kind. 
Lord, you're everything that I need and more. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. How many knows he's worthy to be praised? He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He's King of kings and he's Lord of lords. Aren't you glad to have a Savior and his name is Jesus? He's King of kings and he's Lord of lords. Let's give him a hand clap, could we? Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You going to give me some music? Come on up here, piano player. Let's go. God's good. He's worthy. And what we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to open the altars up. If you need something from the Lord, we're going to pray with you. We want to keep Brother Nathan Abernathy in our prayers. We're going to keep um, Sister Darla's grandbaby in our prayers. Um, I forget her name. What is Stella? I was going to say Stella. This is Miss Little Stella. You've all met her. We want to pray for her. How many knows the Lord's a healer? My, my, my. We want to pray for her, and we want to pray for the children's youth camp coming up. I want to see these kids come back with on fire for the Lord. How many would like to see that? 